Yeah, let's talk about permanent residency here in Ecuador. So the permanent resident process takes some time. You know, it's not uh, not as slow as other residency programs, but it does take time. We spent the last two and a half years basically working towards permanent residency in Ecuador. We'll go through the process. It's a pretty easy process once you have temporary, but uh, let's uh, go through the process. But before we do that, let's talk about why one may want to get permanent residency. Okay, so why would one want permanent residency? Well, it's pretty simple. One is um, residency privileges in general. You get these with temporary as well in Ecuador, but access to banking. If you want to open up a bank account, such as with Bank of Guayaquil, Bank of Pinticho, I think I'm saying both of those wrong, The, um, the you can't. You have to have residency here to do it. You have to have a cedula, which is a state ID, to access these uh, bank accounts. And of course, having a cedula is what you get when you get residency. You have a state ID that you can use. There's some intangibles here in Ecuador too, such as easier and cheaper access to the Galapagos if you're a resident. But the big thing for uh, the nomadic crowd is banking access, in my opinion, and also the right to entry. You know, let's say we have, you know, this might be something out of science fiction, but let's say a global pandemic pops up, squashing uh, travel. Well, if, you're re if you have residency in a country, you can still go to that country. Australia, Aus Australia may be being the uh, outlier there. Uh, shorter lines at the airport. Well, maybe. Uh, certainly Mexican residency gets me shorter lines at the airport. I haven't seen too many shorter lines with the Ecuador residency, but that can sometimes be a benefit. It's also easier to maintain as far as a permanent resident. Temporary residency, you have to renew every two years. You come in and out of the country as much as you want, but you have to come down here and re-up your residency every two years, which means U.S. background checks, uh, apostille documents, etc., once you get permanent residency, you have it. You know, there's some caveats here. We'll talk about it. But you don't have to reapply for it. You have it, and it's easy to maintain because you don't have to renew it. And for long-term planning, you know, maybe Ecuador being a cheap place is not a bad place to retire. So already being a permanent resident, having access to the local health care system can be helpful on that. So let's talk about the process. Requirements to become a permanent resident. Well, you, first of all, you got to be a temporary residency. Temporary residencies are granted at, for two years. And there's other YouTube videos in my list and certainly others on the internet that talk about how what you can achieve temporary residency. I did it back in 2022. I started in the U.S. by getting paperwork together. I came into Ecuador on a tourist visa and finished temporary residency here. After having temporary residency for 21 months, you can apply for permanent residency. And literally the day I hit 21 months of temporary residency, I applied for permanent residency. Now, like I said, with temporary residency, oh, the other requirement, uh, as while you're a temporary resident, you have to have been outside of Ecuador for less than 90 days. Maybe that's less than equal to 90 days, but 90 days is the magic. So if you have temporary residency, you can come and go and renew it as much as you want. But if you want to apply for permanent, uh, you can not be out of the country for no, no more than 90 days while on your temporary for the first 21 months there. You have to have a Ecuadorian police report. Not hard. You're in Ecuador. You have to be to do, do this. Uh, you, have to up, you have to update your certificate uh, or degree registered with the uh, registration of college degrees here in, in uh, Ecuador. <laughs> That's if you're on a professional visa, if you're on a, and there's a, a lot of other visas down here for temporary professional is the one I did, which you can get granted if you have a college degree. There's uh, retirement visas, there's visas for people who can prove that they're um, self-employed now, there's uh, investment visas, there's, I, I lose track and they change all the time, but I did a professional visa, and had to uh, update the uh, certificate of registry for my degree. Have to have a photo, power of attorney. Hmm, what's that mean? We'll talk about that in a minute. And you have to have uh, one year of bank statements showing that you make at least $450 per month. 
that's for when you're coming off a professional visa to permanent. Other visas require more. Don't ask me why. Now, what's this power of attorney thing? Power of attorney is for if you're really lazy and you have a good lawyer. So I granted a limited power of attorney to my lawyer here who did all this work for me. I have yet to step into an immigration office here. My attorney takes care of all this for me. She found she got the um, police report needed. She did the updated certificate work because she had done my professional registry. I think they even took a photo of me. Uh, they went and did all the legwork to validate the outside of Ecuador for less than 90 days. Although I did track that, I had a spreadsheet listing uh, exit and entries back into the country. And I kept a copy of all my boarding passes and or receipts for the flights that I took. So get all this stuff together, including your one-year bank statement, and you meet the wonderful world of Ecuadorian politics. Because now... And it was literally the month that I applied back in August. They changed the requirement to where you no longer needed a year. You had had three months, but they had to be notarized. And that's a whole separate set of fun to get U.S. bank statements notarized in Ecuador. They literally changed that the month. No warning. It just changed. That happens here in Ecuador. They like to change rules for no apparent reason. So I had to scramble get three months notarized. But that was no problem. Again, I was working with a lawyer who had uh, worked with notaries that understood this process, understood how U.S. bank accounts work, were able to just notarize bank statements that I downloaded off the Internet, of course, in front of them. So it's not too bad. So lo and behold, then you have permanent residence, sort of. The first two years of Ecuadorian residency, permanent residency, you are restricted. You cannot be out of the country for any more than 180 days. If you come back in after 182 days of being out of the country, it's a little exactly fuzzy what happens. Uh, I've heard that they really don't want to deny you back access, but when you go to renew things, you're going to start having trouble. So 180 days, that's a lot of time, though. You right. can be out of the country for six months. Um, and that's only for the first two years. After the first two years, then you're pretty much free. You have to pop back in the country every couple of years. And what does it mean to come back in? Far, not specific, but being not specific, I think most people assume visa runs are fine, where every two years you fly into Quito, go to a Quito hotel, enjoy the, a meal, have a drink, maybe spend the night and have breakfast, fly out the next day. I do recommend the breakfast at the Quito hotels. So you definitely want to stay overnight and get a, a good, uh, good dinner and a good breakfast before you fly out. That's not a requirement lately. So that are, is the steps for permanent residency. It's actually quite easy. So my process basically went um, about two months before my permanent residency, uh, uh, before I was eligible to apply for permanent residency, that 21-month magic mark, I started talking with my lawyer. We gathered up all the paperwork, which wasn't much, you know, she wanted to see my bank statements uh, beforehand, before we got the final ones, just to make sure she wasn't wasting her time, um, pay her money, you know, always got to do that. And then she did all the prep work literally on the day she uh, went down to the um, immigration office with the power of attorney, with my application, presented it. A few weeks later, I had permanent residence. That was it. Took a little longer to go get the cedula. I had to go down to the local cedula office, but that was no big deal. Got that. That was it. It's a pretty painless process after you've gone through all this stuff for temporary. You don't need any U.S. background checks again because you've been in the country almost all the time. You just need an Ecuadorian background check, which is easy for the lawyer to get. That's the process. And that's all you have to do to become a permanent resident after you have temporary, of course. And that's it. I hope you find this useful. And I will leave the name and website of the lawyer I worked with. I highly recommend her. Take care. And I'll be doing another video soon, I hope.